welcome to another episode of Massey Ferguson Hay Talk. My name is Matt LaCroix. I'm Director of Marketing for Hay and Forage for AgCo. Hey there, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Jessica Williamson, Livestock and Forage Manager with AgCo. And today we're going to talk about two separate subjects. This is our final episode, so we're going to hit two subjects on this one. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about triple window attachments, what it is, what it can do for you, and all the, the, the benefits of it. And also we're going to talk about double conditioners. Jessica's got some really great information. She did a, a research study out in, out in the field comparing our double conditioner and our single conditioner. So we had a control there. We didn't go up against competitors or anything. Mm -hmm. So we can have a, uh, you know, apples to apples comparison on double versus single conditioner. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, uh, Jessica. A um, triple window attachment, for those of you that don't know what, the, what it is, it goes under the belly of a self-propelled windrower. Okay? Now, if you go back uh, quite a few years, uh, we invented a, a you know, conveyor-style double window attachment that was uh, only available through us at that time, and it put two windrows together. Um, there was a tripler kit that went on it, it would propel the crop even further so you could put three windows together, but it, it wasn't the most efficient thing in the world. And we had to go back to the drawing board because our uh, operators are demanding higher and higher efficiencies. And therefore, we have now moved from a double window attachment to a triple window attachment so you can put three windows together. So, for those of you who don't know how it works, your first pass you go through with your windrower, <clears throat> you'll have the triple window attachment raised up and you'll drop your windrow just like normal. When you come through your second pass, You'll put that second wind row uh, on top of the first one, and your third pass goes on top of both of those. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how in the world does that work, and how is it going to you know, help my uh, processes and everything? And it's not for everybody. Uh, a lot of things, uh, just like a lot of things, and hey, everything's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But it really shows its efficiencies in when you're running a forest chopper behind it, because uh, you'll come through there with your uh, supple pedal wind rower, and then uh, X amount of hours later, you come through with your chopper. Now, in recent years, since we invented the advanced conditioner for Twin Max double conditioner, uh, what we have found now is you can come in there with that chopper much faster. So Jessica's got you know a very good, uh, strong opinion, obviously, on how regrowth happens and stuff. So can you tell us if we can get the crop off the field, even if it's 12 hours faster, do we find some type of efficiencies with that? Absolutely. So it's really important to understand that as soon as you remove that crop from its root, so as soon as you mow it, the quality is going to start declining. So the overall goal is after mowing to get that crop baled or chopped or in a silo, whatever the case may be, as quickly as possible. And so this is a really great option, Matt, that you're talking about here to get this crop off of the field as quickly as possible. So uh, we talked a few episodes about plant respiration. And um, after we mow that crop, it's going to start respiring. And that's going to be utilizing those uh, really highly digestible sugars. Um, so those highly digestible sugars that are found within that crop are just going to be burning up through the respiration process. And so uh, you talked a little bit about the double conditioner, but this past year, uh, we wanted to take a look at some dry down rate differences with a double conditioner versus a single conditioner in the same wind rower or the same type of wind rower side by side, and then open up those conditioning rolls and compare it to no conditioning at all. So we essentially did a side by side comparison, uh, replicated randomly across the field. And again, we looked at no conditioning, single conditioning, and then our twin max double conditioner. And essentially what we saw was comparing our single conditioning to double conditioning. We got that crop off the field about six hours sooner. So in this study, granted, we did do it with dry hay, but the way that we can convert that into our silage is still, we want to keep the respiration as short as possible. So even by getting that crop off of the field sooner, we're going to gain a quality benefit. 
And with our uh, with our no condition, uh, the farmer that we were working with, uh, he was a dairy farmer up in Wisconsin. He preferred us to make dry hay because he had plenty of silage for the year, but we actually could not get that crop dried down enough. And so we ended up having to bale it up and wrap it for him. So uh, moral of the story is uh, single conditioning is better than no conditioning. But of course, our Twin Max double conditioner really outperformed um, both no conditioning and the single conditioner. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that's one of those things, you know, people are saying, how does a double conditioner affect me? Do I really need a double conditioner? I think in one of our prior episodes, we talked about that. And just like I mentioned earlier, it's not for everybody because you need to make sure uh, that it works within your processes or you can change your processes to work within that double conditioner. Because we have seen people that where it did actually dry down too fast. There it was a, a mm-hmm. one example I have is a one man operation and he would go around and cut all this hay. And then once he was done cutting, he would hop in his round baler and go around and round bale all this hay. Uh, and he was using our single conditioner. Well, he said, well, I need these efficiencies. I need, you know, better quality hay and so forth. So he got a uh, Twin Max double conditioner, went around and cut all this hay. And the problem is that first hay he started cutting, because he was cutting multiple hundreds of acres at a time, that first hay he was cutting was getting bleached and it was drying down too fast uh, before he could get around to it again with the baler. So he was still cutting. So he had to stop his cutting process, go start baling the hay that he started originally. So just make sure, you know, you can either change your operation or that it is right for your operation before you get into it. Because I hate for anybody to make, you know, bad hay. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, also with the uh, double or uh, triple window attachment I mentioned earlier, some people might say, hey, I'm not using a chopper. How does this, you know, affect me? Do I really need something like this? And it does come in handy in a lot of scenarios. So if you're uh, in the northernmost states up into Canada as well, and you're only getting one cutting a year, if you're in really high altitude places, or you're only getting two cuttings a year, and you want to push in that third cutting that, you know, may may or might not be, you know, a good idea, what you can do with a triple window attachment is come through and put three windrows together. And at the end of the day, the equivalent is going to be of having a normal windrow of what you're used to for the rest of the season. but now, because you put three, you know, smaller wind rows together, you have a proper mm-hmm. wind row at this point, and then you can pick up your bailing efficiencies when you're running with that through the field, right? So, yep. um, it it's uh, not a very expensive kit to put a uh, triple wind row attachment on your, uh, you know, Massey Ferguson wind rower, and and it can if you use it, say, you know, three or four times, depending on how many acres you're cutting. Obviously, it'll pay for itself. Uh, just like the uh, Twin Max double conditioner, if it's right for your farm, the additional cost is minimal compared to what you're going to get, you know, and you know, the dividends in the end. Yeah. Another thing that I forgot to mention with our uh, Twin Max uh, double conditioner option is in this study that we did in Wisconsin, we saw no decline in overall forage quality. So uh, I'll be very honest with you, Matt, whenever we went into the project and we laid out the protocol and we talked about everything that we were going to collect, I thought, boy, I hope that this double conditioner doesn't uh, lose any leaves, you know, doesn't cause any leaf loss because essentially... um, as we talked about before, with a single conditioner, we're getting a crimp every three to four inches. And then with a double conditioner, we're getting a crimp about every two inches. And so, of course, that's going to be a higher incident of being around the leaves, right? Because we're getting a closer a closer crimp uh, along the stem. But indeed, we saw no reduction in forage quality with our double conditioner. Um, so this is showing that, uh, you know, this double conditioner now granted, if we do get the crop too dry, like you talked about, we can't hang our hats with saying that you're not going to lose leaves if your crop is too dry. Mm-hmm. But uh, in this project that we did, we bailed at 14 percent. Um, and we saw no reduction in overall forage quality uh, with the Twin Max. That is that is really good news because you know I've been selling uh, our Twin Max conditioners for many years, and mm-hmm. and I talk about you know one reason we have the still and still condition rule so we don't bruise the leaves, and that's the last thing we do in alfalfa crop is bruise the leaves uh, and or lose the leaves. And so I've never even considered the double conditioner 
potentially come into contact. That's good to know that the the added you know value of the crop may mm -hmm. you know offset <clears throat> and and then some the uh, the potential of damaging more leaves or something. But that is really good news. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any final thoughts or uh, anything you want to tell our audience before we hang up our season two of Massey Ferguson Hay Talk? No, uh, it's been great. Thanks so much for having me on this season. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we've talked a little bit uh, for our viewers. We've talked a little bit about what you can expect for season three. And I think that we have a lot of really cool things coming. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing uh, this process with you. And thanks so much for all of our viewers or listeners and whatever platform it is that you're consuming this content. Um, we hope that we can continue uh, to bring you high quality hay uh, conversations, high quality hay talk. Yeah, that's that's perfect. So, one thing for the for the viewers, if you have any you know feedback, we're on Facebook and and other social platforms. So, if you want to give us feedback of something you want us to talk about, uh, you want us to do some research into whatever it may be, uh, it's one thing to, to look at, and uh, we look forward to. Uh, being in touch again and season three we're going to try to get more in depth and get out in the field so we can get uh, face to face yeah. with some farmers and talk about their potential uh, needs what they're seeing in the industry what they're seeing in their fields uh, their equipment needs their agronomic needs and or changes they, they see playing out and we're going to have some really good content for you there so again jessica really really appreciate your time and your knowledge and insight into all the agronomic benefits of uh, hay and forage. And my name is Matt LaCroix, and this has been season two of Massey Ferguson Hay Talk. We look forward to seeing you again real soon.